Notably, as managing director at the center, he led operations across multiple delivery centers, driving operational excellence and client satisfaction. His commitment to excellence is evident through his certifications as a black belt from GE and a COPC coordinator where he championed quality and process optimization yielding tangible results. As director at Medaj Techno Concept Private Limited, Dr. Tripathi continues to inspire and lead, shaping industries and impacting lives with his unparalleled vision and leadership. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Gunjan Tripathi. PhD students here, for organizers, my colleagues from Medaj, Kartika, Vishali, all my <coughs> beloved students. First of all, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to come here and address all of you. And. Uh, <coughs> I was really inspired. I like the theme, the keywords, the three keywords in the theme, entrepreneurship, innovation, and society. I think uh, my introduction uh, has already been given, but uh, just to, it is, this brings me, the, this to, takes me to the memory lane. When I was leaving the last company 12 years back, it was a big MNC and uh, I was a partner there and uh, when I was about to leave, my brother who started this company in 2007, his name is Mr. Samir Tripathi, we are two real brothers and uh, I had become MD at that time and I was discussing during lunch time with Saurav and uh, Rohit and he just mentioned one thing. Uh, as an MD, I used to think that I have kind of arrived or evolved into a very uh, great professional, someone who has arrived in life. But uh, least I knew was that I have, as an entrepreneur or as a as a director of a new company, that time it was five years, uh, young company. I'm going to start from ground zero. And he just mentioned this to me that. You are moving, now you will see the real life. So far, you were seeing a real life. And what exactly that may, meant? Because uh, entrepreneurship, innovation, and society. If you take care of all these three things, that is what we at Midhaj do. Because <coughs> Midhaj is a young, this is a new generation company started by a single promoter, Mr. Samir Tripathi. And uh, we work only for Government of India projects. Government of India or government projects, state government projects. And uh, it is, in the last 12 years, I realized that at least uh, when I was moving to Medaj from Accenture, I did not know how country is actually run. Not only because most of my career was in was with global clients and was outside India. Also because I never got interested into this field, this topic. And as Medhaj, as I progress, progressed my career with Medhaj, then my clarity into how India is run and what is the role government plays and how does different entities of government you know, legislature, executive, and judiciary, all these impact every professional. Most of you are MBA students here and PhD scholars. So whatever career you choose, whether you are after your MBA, whether you are going to sell shampoo or soap in an MNC, or you are going to work in a FinTech company, or you are going to start as an entrepreneur. One thing, there are some common themes going to be there. 
and I strongly encourage everyone to know that how government works. And uh, I am very thankful to and uh, Professor Deepak. I am really thankful to uh, Munjal University that we they called us. They and especially Rohit who facilitated my presence here because when I engaged my team, Kritika Kritika mainly worked on the on this topic. Then only we realized that we are the only company in India, consulting company in India, which is 100% working in the area of sustainability. Even for that matter, big force and other co big consulting companies, they have presence in various areas, so they are diversified. But, and why do I say that? You will be clear as I progress during the presentation. If I have to define sustainability, frankly, I, while in the process of making this presentation, we realize that we are a consulting company by spirit, and our soul is of a consultant. So we ended up creating a very extensive deck, extensive set of sustainability. And obviously in 30, 35 minutes, 40 minute session, I'm not going to bore you or run you through each and every slide, each and every word on the slide. But as long as I'm able to sensitize you on the topic and generate some interest, generate some appreciation of the topic, I think my job is done. Because uh, as I said earlier, even whatever you do, this topic is going to be a part of your career. You realize it or not, you realize later in your career, then sooner, but this topic is going to be there. So, it, and thanks to the organizer for giving me this post lunch session. So, first of all, uh, I have to get rid of the desert <laughs> images out of your minds and then get the sustainability into your mind. But, uh, but please follow the content very seriously because the, you all, most of you will go through your campus interviews and then your career path will start. And uh, this one, uh, uh, I know how each one of you would know how to use YouTube. YouTube would be your another friend. So I, I started few months back, I started a channel called, called Broccoli Management Channel. And I will, uh, because I realized at many point of time, uh, I wish someone had told me this point in career, in my corporate life, in my career, uh, 20 years back or 25 years back, my life would have been different. And so all those points, whatever comes to my mind, uh, so I just cover that in that channel in small five to seven, nine minutes videos. So I would request each one of you to subscribe to that channel and add to my subscribers list. <laughs> and But more important than that, benefit yourself while you move ahead in your career, the Broccoli Management Channel. And I'm going to upload this session also in that channel with the permission of Professor Pandit. <coughs> so coming to the topic uh, of sustainability, Bhagavad Gita has uh, this shlok. This shlok is taken from Bhagavad Gita. Yat ekena chakram charam nanu vartet chakram tat tu durvalam purudvaram tasmar yogasya siddhe. Basically, this talks about the whatever holds the world order, you have to preserve it. We may do a lot of things which are not right, which are wrong, but in every decision making, especially from a corporate life point of view, whether you sell a soap or do a coding or whatever you do, whatever decision you take in life, you should question, and if it is going to be a big decision, you should question whether it is going to impact the world order or whatever holds the world order. And uh, so the key word here is world order. So whatever is the world order, you should not touch, you should not disturb that. And you should try to work for the well-being of the society because at the end of the day, the it is what is going to preserve you and your future generation. So let's see how much we will be able to cover. But uh, this is my wish list. What is sustainability? We will talk about sustainability development goals. We will talk about uh, 
social entrepreneurship which is one of the key themes uh, being covered in the in this uh, workshop and then government policies for sdgs social and environmental impact of government policies so uh, <clears throat> in one of my previous organizations the the global ceo used to say that we should plan for one foot today and one foot tomorrow and that line somewhere got registered a lot of voices said a lot of things and which i have most of the things like each one of you i also forgot but somehow this line got registered in my mind that one foot today and one foot to tomorrow and uh, i will just extend this to a step further that present not at the expense of or not at the yeah not at the expense of future is what is sustainability so while you are working today you are basically for i would like to speak in your language you all want to be well employed how many of us want to be well employed right each one of us do you also want to be employable also in future or just get a 50 lakh salary today and then tomorrow buy away from the company because you did not do anything to remain employable right so you want to work on present and you want to work in future also and that is what is sustainability when you are working on today don't forget tomorrow don't do anything which jeopardizes your tomorrow but the concept of sustainability has three aspects and uh, kritika said i i have just kept this in in this order social environment economic so that c i can easily remember this as for social and for anything to be under this umbrella of of uh, sustainability theme it should have a social impact it should have an impact on the environment and it should have an economic impact and whatever jobs you get i am sure you will be able to relate as long as you are able to relate this to any of these three parameters you are working in the area of sustainability in 2011 this book had come target 3 billion by abdul kalam ji and uh, that time i did not have much knowledge i had not heard about this theme called sustainability and this was very close to my heart because i love this book because this book basically talks about that 21st generation entrepreneurs and well the successful entrepreneurs will be the one who will be working in the social sector normally when we say social sector the first thing which comes to the mind is society uh, charity not for profit it is not that you can make profit you can do a good job commercially and that is what this or this or this book provides a framework and they have used a term called pura provision of urban amenities in rural areas and why i wanted to start the session with this slide this concept because if you look at all the government of india initiatives somewhere most of the money is being spent on providing urban amenities in rural areas only why developed countries became developed why singapore is singapore today because they did this much ahead in their entire life cycle unfortunately we did not have that kind of leadership in our country that kind of vision in our country that we invested in roads water electricity to that extent when we should have done it and uh, that is why we are still struggling and uh, we are in that developing countries category so pura is a pure uh, so how many of you want to be an entrepreneur in this group and how many of you don't want to be entrepreneur <laughs> i think that's a better way to ask you i think you raise hand in both How, how how is that possible <laughs> okay at least you are clear good so 
for those who want to be entrepreneur you must understand this concept because this will open up plethora of opportunities in front of you gandhi ji non violence only but he had lot of views for entrepreneurs for business and you must spend time in understanding that huh? in the paucity of time because of paucity of time i have not covered this is the historical evolution of sustainable development goals basically when uh, sustainability was a uh, point as a term as a theme in uh, globally then uh, there were 17 categories uh, defined and uh, 17 targets goals were defined and uh, each of those goals uh, are taken very seriously and when i say uh, that uh, you should know how country runs so what is uh, i i am a director with a company called medhaj and we are a consulting company and uh, we work with infrastructure sector and what we do basically uh, how government runs government of in, uh, india or state governments for that matter from their kitty from their funds they sponsor or they come up with various schemes in various sectors and the sector includes everything electricity power road urban urban uh, areas urban development rural development and uh, uh, it and they come up with various schemes but government does a very thorough job and that is uh, of uh, if people just think that it's a political decision that uh, this scheme has come and the project uh, outlay is say 1 lakh crore no it doesn't uh, just work on the political whims and fancies there is a process a dpr is prepared detailed project report and uh, a lot of effort so companies like ours they we prepare, uh, prepare detailed project reports we hire engineers and that is the real work which engineers do in the field they go to the remotest areas in the country they do the survey using equipments using a project report they allocate the fund to various schemes and these the, the fund is then distributed among different states and then uh, once a uh, fund is allocated then they hire a consultant to supervise the work to initiate the hiring of the actual contractors so how uh, have you heard the names of uh, uh, companies like lnt so they are the epcs they are the turnkey contractor who do the actual work on the ground and the consultants project management consultants are like big fours you know big fours you know meeraj now after all this great talk i that did so far such as week yes so <laughs> meeraj is the company which i am representing and we are working in 28 states doing project management consultancy for the most for government of government schemes in various sectors electricity road and uh, education water mining and uh, railways so these are the core infrastructure sectors and uh, these are the 17 uh, this this slide has two objective one is to take your eyesight and second is uh, to make you aware that what are these 17 goals so basically people who want to be in the sustainability area they should remember it by heart that these are the goals in fact these are covered in the in fact when i was uh, uh, going through some document my son who is in class 10 he told me that he is he knows it all and he remembered each and every goal by heart because it was there in one of his subjects so it is covered so well in our curriculum so i would assume that many of you would still remember so uh, no poverty no hunger these are the various life on land there is a keyword uh, for each one of these goals i just want to spend some time so that uh, you are aware about uh, what exactly are the goals at least this should be the take away this is the bare minimum you should go away with from this presentation that what are the 17 goals because uh, each one of you will definitely come across in some of the initiatives in your career so no poverty is basically you know no hunger waste less food zero hunger basically then good health is vaccinate your family 
just for me to remember quality education gender equality clean water and sanitation affordable and clean energy decent work and economic growth industry innovation and infrastructure in fact world uh, have you heard of the term of an entity called world economic forum and one of the topics i follow those discussions very closely every year and few weeks back only uh, world economic forum had its summit and one of the topic was the role of government in uh, uh, as an investor in, in a country and uh, india is doing a great work work as an in, because why we did not fall into recession while most of the other countries did fall post covid was because of our inf investment in the infrastructure you s you would have noticed it yourself that so much of infrastructure spending is happening in power road it in all the infrastructure sectors basically and that has actually ensured that organizations survive they have work and when our organizations survive they create opportunities for people only and uh, obviously take the country to the next level so in the industry innovation and infrastructure which is uh, one of the themes uh, for uh, for the conference is very important reduced inequality here we are talking about income inequality then sustainable cities and communities the government of india scheme how many of you have heard about this amrut scheme that is about uh, amenities and about the infrastructure in the cities in india responsible consumption and production climate action life below water which is basically aquatic life life on land which is things like afforestation deforestation peace justice and strong institutions any presentation is incomplete without the photograph of our beloved prime minister honorable modi ji and uh, here this makes perfect sense to have this slide because uh, uh, most of the government of india schemes have been launched under his uh, leadership and as a part of his vision towards the uh, future of india and uh, so these are the 17 goals and uh, this is a very busy slide and don't worry there is no quiz and uh, no questions i am going to ask but uh, you should definitely just get a flavor of uh, this because this has been taken from a un uh, report united nations report and where the each of the sdg goals are tracked very uh, uh, very closely and the the green arrow can you see green arrow yes sir and so basically the color in the boxes on the left lower side of the slide is uh, the health of the that is dg goal so if it is the box is green and the arrow is upward green it is good or bad even if you don't want to become entrepreneur you can answer that question <laughs> where is that non entrepreneur guy i think you already left oh you are there so which one is best here so green and green because you are already in a good state and uh, and you you are still improving so clean energy is one area where government where india is doing very well and let me because we are uh, known more uh, as a consultant in power sector because that is where we started our journey from and uh, when uh, 20 gigawatt was the target of solar energy by 2022 in pre bjp era and when this and that two different uh, states had uh, challenges and they were saying we will not be able to meet this target it is too stringent the target and when this government came into place they said uh, okay the revised target is not 20 it is 100 red and red yeah so obviously we have we don't have endless time 
and uh, but we as a part of this exercise uh, we have done a detailed study on each sdg goal if someone wants more detailed work uh, access to detailed work you have to uh, you have to subscribe to my channel and then write in one of the video in comment box to, and we will send a copy of this presentation that much let me see how many of you are interested in this topic policy efforts uh, th these are interesting slide to get a flavor where our country is heading towards obviously you don't have to master this but if you the sdg score year on year it is increasing but it, it is increasing like the marks of an average student right it is not a leap the, the increase is not leaps and bounds we would have expected a much steeper increase on these scores but you have to understand that this is the amalgamation of 17 goals and then there are 100 and these are these are some of the questions asked in the un report whether voluntary national when did the government complete a voluntary national review so government has to conduct a review there thankfully whatever is green is good so 2017 and 18 government did a review the yellows are the bad ones where did government issue an official statement endorsing the implementation of sdgs no so so those are for the red ones are the ones where we failed so the important one is have national indicators been identified to monitor the implementation of sdgs yes 118 indicators have been identified so people uh, and it, these are very interesting readings even if they are not part of your syllabus once you read these reports you come to know where exactly is the country heading towards and you also broaden your horizon this whole effort of consult doing this study and uh, and we did this only for this uh, presentation because while we are working on various government of india schemes which formally part um, make a part of the some sdg goal here or there but that is our contribution towards sustainability but uh, this whole exercise of analyzing these numbers was such an interesting exercise that somewhere it appeared to me as if the country is unfolded in front of my eyes that where exactly are we lagging where exactly are we leading so we did some uh, uh, that kind of analysis has been done in a in a more detailed way we have a slide on threat threat is basically all reds and further to go uh, so which are the sdgs where the situation is really bad we are dipping and we are not doing well then strength is you are doing well and you are improving and then weakness and then opportunities so what, so we did, we have done some kind of sort analysis and uh, those interested can ask for the detailed presentation there is the performance in india uh, so this is basically which can, which are the, on each of the SDG which states are doing well and which states are not doing well and uh, so this this is the zero hunger so in fact uh, you know we are the most hungry people or poor people who are not able to cater to the proper meals to them who don't have enough earning they are coming from these color code these slides are very self explanatory and uh, this does give you a good health good idea about health of the country so these are the good uh, these are the ones where the performance is good and you can see that uh, if you look at the government of india schemes one of the some of the schemes which have been extremely successful in by government of india is like ministry uh, of power how many of you have heard the name of sabhagya scheme sabhagya scheme was about giving house uh, electricity connection to every household every rural household so clearly affordable and clean energy and then uh, even uh, solar connections solar uh, uh, increasing the installed capacity of solar all those kind of things come under affordable and clean energy and uh, clearly we are doing well clean water and sanitation the flagship scheme of pm prime minister uh, 
नरेंद्र मोदी जी वेयर एवरी रूरल हाउस होल्ड हैज टू बी प्रोवाइडेड क्लीन वाटर कनेक्शन थ्रू फंक्शनल हाउस होल्ड टाइप कनेक्शन सो दैट स्कीम हैज रियली डन वंडर्स इन टर्म्स ऑफ कटिंग अक्रॉस द कंट्री एंड प्रोवाइडिंग दैट टैप कनेक्शन टू ईच एंड एवरी रूरल हाउस होल्ड लॉट ऑफ प्रोग्रेस हैज बीन मेड एंड दीज आर समर लिटनस टेस्ट whether whatever you are doing on the ground when the nasht and these are the these are coming from the international reports so clearly these these schemes are working and how, how this is how performance evaluation should be done for various government of india schemes and frankly these 17 goals are very uh, nicely identified parameters converted into 118 for the further sub goals and uh, like uh, when you uh rohit and uh, saurabh would uh, have better experience coming from I, ibm and ge background that the how dash how dashboards are prepared to a very minute level uh so similarly it in a in a country as big as india how uh, these things are so important because for each and everything there is a metric and metric really represents the performance in your mba also you would have heard this statement called unless you measure it you can't improve it so everything is being measured and reported and uh, those one some of you should definitely spend some time and get your horizons broadened top five states bottom five states we have done all that analysis and uh, so these are the schemes uh, I definitely want you to just have a quick glance uh, at these schemes. These are the government of India schemes which definitely impact the SDG goals, and where Medhaj as an organisation is working on most of them. PM Suryoda Yojana is the latest one which has been announced in this budget, and uh, where uh, so far all mo most of the investments have been in providing the conventional energy connections. but uh, in the next term uh, or the future investments is going to be the similar investment is going to be in the solar area jal jeevan mission amrit 2.0 revamp distribution sector scheme rdss can you imagine what is the project outlay of rdss scheme this is the discoms you would have heard the term called dis uh, discom distribution companies through which uh, the electricity is finally reached out to each of our homes and uh, they were in very bad health for decades and now government is spending 3 lakh crore rupees 3 lakh crore in revamping those say. so you can imagine the kind of investment the kind of opportunity it is it is going to throw so when google facebook these companies are fire, firing employees actually this is a good news for infrastructure sector because all those opportunities are getting created because these there is ample opportunities and uh, because of extra love for it jobs these somewhere this service was happening for these industries so these industries need tons of people bright and engineers and mbas like you many of you and uh, the opportunities are there and uh, but the interest should be there in pursuing your core uh, core engineering or core management skills social entrepreneurship i think uh, <clears throat> basically social entrepreneurship is about the process of creating innovative solution to social problems and uh, any solution which and there are a lot of Uh, good social scientists who have really dedicated their lives to social uh, social sector and uh, for the society they have uh, i think kritika had found out their names and put it down urvashi sahani harish uh londo she has worked extensively on this Uh, thank you uh, i would actually quickly run through uh, these these top 5 uh, uh, social entrepreneurs that are working 
so firstly, Urvashi Sadi uh, on the shelf, she is basically working on the education sector. She is providing a platform. And uh, the intent of uh, mentioning about the name of uh, Bill Retton was because he started this foundation called Ashoka, wherein he wanted to cultivate more uh, social entrepreneurs. And majority of uh, these social and Ashoka, and then they have started on uh, their own initiatives. So, uh, as I mentioned, Urvashi Sahani on the education part, uh, Harish uh, Mande on uh, the use of solar. So, uh, as uh, it was mentioned that uh, urban facilities should be given to rural areas. So, he basically uh, uh, envisions to provide solar rooftop or solar connection to uh, the people in the rural areas. And he has a facility of training them also. So it is basically to uh, uh, upliftment of the rural uh, uh, people and the skill development. Uh, then uh, the, um, initi then uh, Jeru Bilomaria, she did on the child line, that is basically uh, to give uh, access to uh, the uh, people, uh, the children who are working on the streets, so that they get, if any help is required, so, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, the police force and everything, they should get access of all those rights. Uh, then Goonj, uh, I, I think many of you must have heard about that. So it is basically, it uh, caters to the first sustainability goal, which is uh, donate what you are not using. So whatever we are not using, we can, you know, uh, contact the people of Goonj, uh, we can give it to them. They uh, do the sorting of all those uh, things that we donate and then they pass it to uh, the rural areas, wherein those uh, women, they create something out of that and then it is again said. So uh, this is a, a, a vision of uh, giving employment to the rural women and uh, and so it is a social impact. Uh, then uh, People Tree on the Santosh uh, he also has uh, been doing one more on um, you know, education and uh, skill development uh, on uh, for the rural people. And uh, if quickly I can give you some figures, I will not take much time. Uh, on the Suryodha Yojana which uh, was mentioned, uh, so in that uh, Yojana, it is mentioned that one crore uh, solar rooftop connections would be given, which uh, as per the sources, if it is implemented, then it would cater to 20 to 25 gigawatt of uh, power supply, like through the renewables. So what is the reason behind this? Once uh, solar and renewable is more used, then the power purchase cost, that is one term which is used in a sector, power purchase cost would be reduced. And uh, with the reduction of this power purchase cost, the reduction or the generation of energy from thermal and coal-based energy would also reduce, which indirectly and directly would reduce the uh, carbon uh, emissions, so the carbon credit earns and all. Uh, then coming uh, to the the scheme called uh, Jal Jeevan Mission Scheme, as Sir had mentioned, so there were uh, almost 19 crore uh, housing <coughs> connections which were to be given under this scheme and as of uh, December 23, almost 73% of that has been achieved and the go government envisions to achieve that goal in 2024. And uh, lastly, I would like to uh, uh, throw some light on LIFE mission, which is LIFE uh, for Environment. That is a mission that has been started in 2021 by uh, our uh, 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 Narin Modi So it is basically to adopt certain, um, you know, uh, things on a daily basis which can actually help in uh, sustaining the environment and having an impact. So there's a statement by UN, if uh, one out of eight billion people around the world start uh, adopting these practices in daily life, then about 20% of the carbon emission can be reduced. So that's a huge thing which, and those um, uh, things are very simple. Uh, like when I entered this campus, I could see there was plastic free uh, campus and no tobacco. So such type of initiatives if taken at a larger scale and uh, taken by, and if uh, all of us are conscious on that front, on the environment front, then we all can make a big difference. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kritika. So, I think a uh, you know, lot of things got covered in the budget also, but uh, in the interest of time, I would just like to take up some questions if you have any and uh, and then wrap it up because there are other sessions also after this one. If there are no questions, then I will start a quiz. <laughs> uh, one question, sir. So, uh, when you see India currently and, you know, future roadmap, 
do you see, you know, that he, he will become a power, super power in, in terms of, you know, uh, driving the SDG goals and sustainability initiatives? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so, we are definitely on the right track, but the pace has to be much faster. Because uh, we are working hard does not mean that others are not working. Because every country is has started to focus a lot on these SDG goals and uh, we are still uh, one, not in the top list. So as the journey is tough, as the runway is long to be covered, uh, I don't see all the SDGs to be uh, meeting their goals very soon. But definitely uh, out of the 17, I can, if I have to take a shot, I would say 10 to 12, we should be better off. But uh, there are some five to seven uh, where the challenge will be more. And uh, but but even if we are able to crack these ten to twelve uh, at a good pace, then definitely we'll be much better off. I don't know whether we'll be superpower or not, because superpower for superpower you need a lot of other things also. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.